All right, I hope we got all the important documents. Uh, I hope we got everything in here. All right. I got the gold and gold bag. All right. The fire's like only three blocks from here. All right. Okay, I got the dog food. There you go. I right, gotta load all this other stuff. We have to go now. All right. All right. So, this could be you. Are you ready to evacuate in 15 minutes? Let's think about that again. Will you be ready? Okay, so can we really evacuate in 15 minutes? We were just showing you our little scene there about what it, how frantic you're going to be as a family to try to evacuate in 15 minutes. What does it take to get ready to evacuate in 15 minutes? Well, it takes two hours of preparation is what it takes. In this video, we're going to talk about what you need to know, what you should expect right, when you get into a situation like this with a fire evacuation. So, yeah, how bad will it be? How much time do we have? Yeah, will I be able to... When, Will I be able to evacuate? Should I wait to be told to evacuate? Should I tell, wait until my neighbor goes? Right? What are the things I need to know and where do I go? And have you got two separate evacuation routes? So these are all the things we're going to talk about. So yeah, can you evacuate in 15 minutes? Heck, I can't even evacuate or leave the house, find my keys, wallet, glasses, sunglasses, right? And nowadays a mask in 15 minutes. So how are you guys going to get ready? All right, so I'm Paul Dutton with the Emergency Preparedness Network. I'm the director of the network. We've worked all right, as a CERT instructor and coordinator now for 20 years, the Red Cross volunteer, right? And of course, an emergency preparedness consultant. And I got to tell you, when our family did this in the station fire, me, the guru of preparedness, right? Who's got all this 20 years of experience that tells other people how to do this. How long do you think it took me and our family and myself and my family to evacuate. Two and a half hours. You heard that right. Yeah, two and a half hours. I'm embarrassed to say it. But you know what? We had a lot of vehicles. We have dogs. Okay. You know, we had to load up vehicles. We had to hitch up trailers. And we weren't ready. And we had already pre-packed. On the morning of the station fire, and the station fire got close to La Crescenta on two different days, right? We were, we packed up and loaded up our car when we're ready to go with all our duffel bags and all our grab and go bags. And we were all set. And that was Thursday. On Saturday morning, we started unpacking until that smoke fog started to lift. And when it did, we suddenly started to see the fire coming over the ridge. Right? And we could, later you could see those same smoke plumes coming over the ridge of La Crescenta, 10,000 feet high. You could see them down in San Diego. So yeah, we started packing up and it took us two and a half hours, even when we had all our stuff ready to go. So you're like, wow, what's it gonna take to get ready right, in that much time? Well, it takes a while. So what do we need to do to do that? So in those early mornings right, on the station fire, especially on Saturday morning, we're trying to load up in all our vehicles and it took us two and a half hours. In the midst of all this, right, we have Jennifer, my daughter, went up onto the roof and saw basically, because we have a huge wash on the other side of our house, uh, basically saw what looked like Noah's Ark running down through that wash basin. Skunks, rabbits, coyotes, mountain lions, even a bear, right? Were all running, squirrels, everything, running away from that fire because they knew it was coming because those smoke plumes were really high and it was getting close. So when you saw that, that pretty, kind of, pretty much freaks you out. So... You need to be ready because we all think it just won't happen to me. I won't have to evacuate. It won't happen here because I'm right in the middle of Burbank. Well, in a wind-driven fire like the Woolsey Fire, 26 miles from the shores of the beaches in Malibu, all the way up to Bell Canyon in less than a day. Yeah, we are all could be susceptible to fire. But we don't think we have to evacuate. It won't be that bad. I'll wait till my neighbor leaves, all right? And all right, or I'll just wait till the last minute. I'll wait until I get my written invitation to tell me to leave. So let's talk about that. In the station fire, right? We were, we were, um, as a sheriff volunteer, I was helping people I, 
giving notices to evacuate, going door to door at two in the morning. And we knocked on my very street, all the, all the doors, all the neighbors, and helped the fellow, my fellow sheriffs to help all these neighbors evacuate. So you need to evacuate. The fire is about 300 yards away. So what does my neighbor say? Uh, this isn't a good time for me. Can you come back at 8 o'clock in the morning? I kid you not. And I'm like, <laughs> you need to be ready. And you need to be ready ahead of time. You need to prepare ahead of time. Because we all think it just won't happen to me. We see that guy on the news all the time. Oh, that happened to the other guy. I didn't think it would happen to me. It will. And we need to be ready. So since you're watching this video, let us help you get ready. We've had a lot of experience over the years as a sheriff volunteer, right? A Red Cross shelter operations manager, okay, on working lots of different fires. And as a CERT coordinator, working the Catalina Fire, the Serre Fire, the Complex Fire out, out in the San Gabriel Valley. Okay, the Serre Fire was the original fire that burned down the, the mobile home park in Silmar. I listened to the radio of the battalion commander as his fire squadrons were getting evacuating out of there. They dropped their hoses and they were actually singed into the cement, into the asphalt as the fire guys, as the firemen were leaving that area because fire can travel fast. Fire can, I can travel up to 45 miles an hour. And there was people on the 210 trying to get ahead of it as they were evacuating. So wind-driven fires like the Woolsey Fire and others, yeah, it can move really fast. In the station fire, it wasn't a wind-driven fire on this side of the hill. Had it been, it'd been another story. Most of Locker Center may have been gone. So an evacuation point for the Los Angeles County Fire was my street. And everything above it, and there's lots of blocks above it, right, would have been left. Because that would have been the standoff point. So all these things are in consideration. And we need to think about these things in consideration right, as we're getting ready. Because when you wait till the last minute, that's how people perish. Right? Don't wait till your neighbor goes. Don't wait. And if you get told by the sheriffs, evacuate. Turn your car around and get ready and do this ahead of time. Because that's what we need to do. You need to stay alert. You need to listen to the, to the weather. You need to listen on red flag warning day, nights and days. And you need to stay tuned to the news so you'll know. You need to get that car turned around. And now you need to start loading up your grab-and-go bags, your important documents. Okay, so now take a minute and look at the pictures on your wall or your walls in your house. What are you going to take? Think about this. Because in the station fire, when I had to close the door, right? My wife, my daughter left. We got the dog in the car. We got all the vehicles out. We're, I'm leaving. I'm the last guy out. And I reached back and looked back into my house where I thought would probably be the last time. And when you get that feeling, you'll never forget it. You want to be ready. You don't want to be caught off guard. The guru of preparedness, right, still took two and a half hours, and now the flames are 300 yards away. So, yeah, you don't want to wait. Okay? We didn't wait. So, and we were still ready from the, the two days before, and it still took us some time. So it takes us two and a half hours to get ready, so you can now evacuate in 15 minutes. But here's our problem. So when we start looking at... These things I'm going to show you up on our screen. What it is is that, yeah, because you waited now, you think all your routes to get out are okay. But everybody else waited. Guess what? Now, as you're looking at this particular right, slide, you're, going, you're asking yourself, why are we sitting in the car with the fire coming at us, waiting on the freeway, and you may not get out because everybody else did. Now, worse yet... Because you took your time to get out, here's our bigger problem. Now you're creating traffic for the fire department to get up, to get to defend your house, and you're actually impeding them from getting up so they can defend your house from the fire. That's even a bigger problem. During the Woolsey Fire, there was hundreds of 911 calls. The fire department has to reserve units to the side to a, right, the field, every one of those 911 calls that takes units away that could be fighting the fire simply because these people panicked 
and waited to the last minute and then dialed 911 and said, how do I get out because there's smoke all around me? You don't want to be that person. Help our fire department. Help them defend your house against the fire. When we ask you to leave or the, right, the fire department asks you to evacuate, the sheriff's department or law enforcement tells you to leave, it's now. Time to leave is now, not when you think it is, because then it will be too late. Remember I said a fire can travel at 45 miles an hour? Yeah. So when that, mile, that, that fire is three miles away, luckily it wasn't a wind-driven fire in our station fire, but it has been on others. Yeah, three miles away at 45 miles an hour. Well, it's basically here by the time you think about it. Give yourself three or four seconds and watch the fire come over the ridge like I have. So you don't want to be in that position. Let's get ready. Let's get ready ahead of time. And don't ever think it won't happen to you. I guarantee you, there's people all over this country that thought that. The Creek Fire and other fires. We're seeing fires that are bigger now that rage on. We're seeing fire tornadoes and firestorms like we saw in the Creek Fire that were 115 miles an hour. They ripped up trees coming out of the ground that were 300 feet high, ripped them completely out of the ground and tossed them like pretzel sticks all over the place. I know. I was on the disaster recovery team. I saw this stuff personally with fires burning all around us right, and trees smoldering and roots burning. That was a big deal. So, yeah, and to see that kind of the devastation, they're still talking about the devastation the Creek Fire has created. So we're getting firestorms and bigger fires that are lasting longer and creating a bigger havoc. You need to evacuate and don't wait. When they tell you or you think you should, go now. So now what we're going to do to get ready. We told you, I, I listen to the news, stay alert, turn your car around and start packing. Start packing now, two hours ahead of time or two and a half hours ahead of time. Get your grab-and-go bags, get your dogs or your pets, get their grab-and-go bags, get their leashes, get their food, get their water, get their medications, okay? And now, open up, go get your suitcases, open them up, and start throwing all the photo out, photos that you want in the suitcases. You know, the ones you got hanging on the wall. Which ones do you want to take? Because you may never see them again. So I'm going to put those all in a suitcase, and I'm going to pack those up and put them in the car. And then... I'm going to grab a couple plastic bags and I'm going to grab all the photo albums. Now I'm going to get Junior to put those in the car. So now we've loaded all those up. And now I want you to go into each room of the house. And I want you to take four pictures, four walls. Uh, each wall, take a picture all the way around in the room. Open up the closets, take a quick picture. These are going to be great for your insurance needs and your insurance purposes. And even open up your drawers if you got time and take pictures of those. Now you have basically all the pictures of all the content of the house. Or you could run around and do a quick little video inside the house. Okay, of all the things in all the rooms. Right, this would be great for insurances. And now important documents. Yes, we're going to get into this in another video. But yeah, you definitely want all those important documents. Okay, uh, marriage license, birth certificates, all those kind of great things. All your bank statements and your insurance papers especially your fire insurance or your home insurance. Definitely want that. And now, what else can I replace? What about my computers, my hard drives, my tablets, my pads, my iPads, my phones, any of those? We're gonna take all that. Okay, now, and lastly, right, now that you've taken photos of all the house, right, inside and out, okay, you got everybody in the car. You got everyone ready, you got the car turned around, you have all your duffel bags, you have your clothes, Okay, and most importantly, you have those photo albums, right? And you have your grab-and-go bags for three days for every person and pet in the household. Okay, now, make sure you lock the door and make sure you leave all the lights on and make sure you leave anything right, flammable like drapes and things like that. Get them away from your windows. Very important. And yes, definitely leave the house locked up. Okay, now you're ready to leave. Don't wait to be told. And especially if you're told to evacuate, evacuate right away. Now you can sit, sit on the couch, ready to go, and now you can leave in 15 minutes. I'm Paul Denton with the Emergency Preparedness Network. I want you and your family to be safe. I want you to be ready, and I want you to be prepared. So I'm glad you watched this video. 
Come on back. We've got some more for you.